All right. So I was hoping to learn Fidacious, but I might have to dive in there just a little bit and see if I can figure out how to make it a little less greedy <clears throat> or make time, timer skill for the day time skill <clears throat> a little less greedy. So, Do you want to keep, anyway, uh, keep talking about what you're doing and then we'll yeah, there. So, so I've been Basically, I just did a huge commit to the timer skill, my, my new, my refactor branch. I have adding timers, um, if you say it a certain way, <laughs> um, adding, uh, getting the, the status of timers and canceling timers all work for now with the refactor um, from a VUI standpoint. So um, there's some edge cases, um, obviously, <laughs> that need to be addressed. Um, so I'll probably do that for a little while. And then once I'm happy with that, I'll move on to the to the GUI stuff. So I wouldn't I wouldn't merge my branch just yet, but <laughs> um, it is it, it, it made some good progress today, I guess is my point, but there's still much to do. Mostly testing today I, and and fixing bugs as I tried as I you know issued commands and it came back with weird things. So um, that's why I made a big commit because it's basically working, um, but it's not working as well as it should. So that's me. Eric, you want to you go before it's too late? Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we've got, uh, I've got most of the quotes in on the, the uh, same front but a few of them are missing or having trouble finding some of the parts. So I was uh, giving them all the, the information they needed to do to really finish that up. A uh, good thing is they were like mostly small parts, so like cents rather than dollars. So, <clears throat> um, and we're gonna start reviewing tomorrow and Friday and some early next week as well. Um, so we're getting closer to that final selection process. Um, I did a little work on uh, the common, well, the, the, the first thing is I sent that uh, kind of skills interaction thing. I think uh, Michael and Gez both commented on that, um, which I, I both those um, inputs are, are cool with me. I think I just want to emphasize that uh, we should probably start simple and plan for the more complex stuff. So as long as we're planning for that, but you know, if we were to look at how all of our, you know, current essential skills interact, um, I think they can both fall into that uh, kind of simple versus media. Uh, I, simple is not the best term, but simple versus media skill interaction. And they all kind of currently work in that. Um, so I, I kind of mentioned yesterday that it's, Benchmark, I did benchmark the other, you know, the competition, and they, they don't do this stuff all that great. And I don't really think there's there's more beyond than those two that I've discovered yet. Um, and they kind of fall on their face in certain cases. So I think we can do better. I think we should be planning for it, but I think we also need to be aware of the level of effort. You know, don't need to, like, make this a huge deal. And, um, you know, to be honest, I've been using... I started out benchmarking <laughs> these products, but I've been using Amazon a lot now in daily use, and these things just don't, they don't really happen all that often. Um, but we need, yeah, we should be thinking about it. So anyway, uh, I don't know what the next action items on that are, um, but we, uh, we need to make some decisions, I suppose. Uh, but in turn, okay, so then I took, I switched focus on to um, the common play, um, the UI uh, that would be needed for the, the high priority uh, music skills that we've kind of determined, which um, I've got in there, uh, Pandora, iHeartRadio, MB, and I went ahead through Spotify in there, even though, you know, obviously it's blocked at this point. Um, but then I just went through and looked at, see, like, okay, what are all the controls you can do in each of, one of these types of uh, players, you know, and the differences. So to start to kind of build up those uh, templates for both the, the voice side and the, uh, the GUI side. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, 
I just sent an email sharing that, so you guys want to take a look. But so then I'll start using that list to start just building out these well, um, GUI templates that kind of fulfill the, the needs of those different players. And yeah, that's about what I'm up to. I'm also building some new 3D printed Mark IIs. Nice one. Um, yeah, I was thinking about the whole like interaction thing and and whether we're you know given the others don't, others don't do it very well, um, is it something that we don't really need to to bother with that much? But then I also think if we can nail that well, then it'll work a lot better in more public environments where you have lots of different users and and lots of people, you know. Um, like communicating with with the same device, um, I think it'll it'll make that process a lot easier. So, um, anyway, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm just advocating. You know, we we do it in, in chunks. Um, you know, with the uh, mm. with the context of you know, we have these current essential skills that we're all heavily focused on. As long as it works with that well, uh, and that we can plan for. For the future but yeah it all kind of depends on the level of effort you know you guys come back well, and say hey this is no problem to do let's just go ahead and do it i yeah and i think there's a fundamental <laughs> difference between the two approaches of saying that skills fall into categories versus interactions fall into categories i think those you know those are are, are pretty fundamental and worth uh, i think putting some uh you know putting our wizard hats on and, and really thinking about um the um Never mind. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> well, yeah, and I would I would say that that from my point of view, um, well, yeah, I mean, definitely, I want to be in the discussion on that. But you know, from the user side, they don't necessarily need to know exactly at this stage. If we're just keeping the, the discussion basically, okay, the essential skills need to act this way. They don't need to know whether it's how you know how the sausage is made. You know. If, if we decide to do the uh, the interaction approach versus the category approach, that's fine by me, as long as we can achieve the same effect from the end user point of view. Yep. So yeah, somebody, but somebody does, I guess, have to step up and be the the wizard here, uh, and on the on the kind of uh, software architecture side. Um, I think we have a software architect on the team, actually. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, so for me, um, we, we got the, the Microsoft Core 2102 release out, um, uh, which seems to, um, have gone all right. Um, no giant fires or anything like that, which is good. Um, Mark, Mark ones have all been updating as expected from, from all reports so far. Um, I also did the Mark II, a new Mark II stable image, but I haven't uh, uploaded, a, you know, an actual new downloadable image um, to the to the download server yet. Um, so I'll, I'll upload that today. Um, does does latest have twenty one oh two right now, or does that lobby tonight? Uh, latest latest will get twenty one oh two tonight. Yeah. Okay. And then, how does that work with Panacore since it's a major release? Is it is it going to have, be automatic, or am I we going to have to say? Uh, you know, is there a question about upgrading? No, it's going to be automatic because okay, yeah, yeah, because it's latest. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, but that is something that we need to think about for you know future when we actually do production releases is how we manage that. But um, yeah, because the big. The, there's not a problem at the moment because all of the skills that we're working on 2008 are working on 2102 but in at some future point in time you know it might not be that we're just increasing functionality it might be that you know joe's you know rando important skill uh breaks when it goes when it goes to to the next major release so we you know need to be able to let people stay on on one or the other, but um, 
yeah, given given where Mark twos are at at the moment um, with dev kits, we're just yeah. plowing ahead. Um, I also did some fixes. I did I did a little fix in the um, in the Mimic recording studio um, because we are getting a lot of attention there at the moment, and um, uh, one of our community members, Thorsten, who did the German um, TTS data set, uh, is doing a, a talk. Um, about his experience and, and promoting, you know, using the recording studio, um, as part of that workflow. Um, it is, it is a, a really nice, uh, tool for that. Um, so, you know, whether people are going to use mimic or not, they can still use the mimic recording studio to actually, um, get that data recorded. Um, but one of the problems has been that, uh, we automatically trim the silence on the recordings and it's been doing that quite aggressively um, which we've seen some problems with so anyway so I, um, I've done a little PR just to like add a buffer in that um, I think ideally I'd actually prefer if we kept the raw recordings and and the trimmed recordings so that you know People don't lose their raw data, but this was the this was the easy win. Um, what else? Uh, anyway, that's probably enough for now. Ken, how goes it? Uh, it's okay. I burned a new uh, image today from latest, so I'm assuming because right now it's uh, on a paired screen. I'm assuming that it'll update sometime tonight and then it'll pull in the latest code and this annoying problem will go away. Is that true? The paired screen. I think if, if you ask like the time or anything like that, it should, that paired screen should go. I've done away. that. Yeah, I've asked a bunch of things, set a timer, yeah. et cetera. This it just stays on this green background paired screen. Hmm. Well, yeah, the, I mean, the paired screen, um, I think is something we need to fix anyway. Um, uh but it's going to update tonight anyway right yeah if it's if it's on if you've selected latest it'll update tonight yeah yeah okay so hopefully this will go by go away by tomorrow and everything will be fine um that's all i was just uh spent a lot of time over the last couple of days going through intent parsing and how everything's working and uh anyway uh i understand where our issues could lie in that um Especially with the way we handle converse and everything, I didn't, didn't realize how radical that was. Anyway, so I'm working on the common play stuff, specifically getting the wiki skill converted to common play. And Just you know, one moment, though, today to today was tough because uh, you know I lost a lot of time because I had a bad sure drive and all that crap. But um, I'll, I'll get back on it tomorrow. One thing that has happened, Derek, we don't have any more Mark II to do it because mine's gotten beaten up pretty good. Uh, I think I dropped it when I was moving in. One of the contractors was here last week, knocked it off with the shelf. <laughs> so all the buttons and sliders don't work. Uh, <laughs> do we have any extra? <laughs> oh, man. You're I didn't think so. That's all right. I can, I can still <laughs> use it. I just can't use the buttons or sliders. <laughs> That's like precious. Got to treat it. Um, you should look at my precious. Use your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you'd enjoy seeing a picture of my precious. But anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, well, okay. So like I said, I'm starting to make some more. It's a bit slow going. I really need to get Josh uh, uh, jazzed about more. Print, the, the mini print farm there in Hawaii. So if I can get him to help me. All right, um, as long as I'm on your radar, it's not imperative. So, yeah, so I have been kind of, the machines have been kind of idle, because I actually did, did some, well, quite a few changes. Um, but yeah, you can see it's printing right back there. Cool. <laughs> so, um, but uh, it, it'll t it just takes a while, because I've only got the one printer and Josh has got this. We'll try and get him to do some. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going through the fallback stuff, Gez, and it sounded like you had a pretty good handle on how that works, right? My, yeah, like I, I have a handle on it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I certainly haven't. So, wasn't didn't build it or anything like that. So, but yeah. 
But yeah, so like, is it the case that there's one fallback entry point, or do all of the commonplace skills have a fallback entry point? Uh, there is a fallback. Yeah, it it goes in in a single fallback entry point, and then it goes through the the priority list of fallbacks. So when you register a fallback, you you give it a you know an in, an integer between zero and a hundred or one and a hundred. Um, currently, we don't use one to four, um, and so number five would be the first fallback um, that got. But the point is, all of these skills register themselves as a, having a fallback method. Yes. and get consulted during the fallback process. Uh, yes, it's not a fallback method. It's like uh, you register you register um, intents as fallbacks, I want to say, but I'd have to go double-check that. Okay, yeah, I'll get into that tomorrow. I was hoping to get in there today, but I had some. I got sidetracked. So anyway, but yeah, that's what I'm it just goes on. through sequentially one after the other because, because the whole point is that there are fallbacks, so it's like, can you answer this question? Yes or no. Can you answer this question? Yeah. And it's not like the regular intents where the first guy that matches it bails. It gets all of their confidence levels and compares them, right? Uh, well, within... So, so like, common query, for example, would be a, a fallback level. And so, um, from the fallback system's perspective, that's just... that's Can the common query system answer the question yes or no? And if it can, then it doesn't go any further. But if it can't, then it goes to the next one down the list. So it is. So it is like regular intent parsing, where the first match and it bails. It, it doesn't allow it to go through and kind of. Yeah, it's more on. like it's more like converse in that way, you know, where it's like if they if they report yeah. yes, then then it then it consumes it. Um, but then within the common query framework, that's going to go out to anything registered as a common query. Yeah, common um, query is different. Yeah, 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 I get that. Right, cool. This is if common query went out. And nothing came back. Yeah. And now it's going yep. out on its fallback leg. Yeah. And the first yep. person who says yes. And I assume the priority that you register determines the ordering at that pro at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just like who who gets loaded first. There's actually a, a numbered ordering. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Anyway, that's what I'm working on. Cool. Uh all right. Well, if Michael's... That's why I, today I thought of a potentially useful enhancement to core um, because I'm doing some debugging right now. And if you turn debugging on, um, the CLI becomes almost useless because just messages just fly by. Um, so I was wondering if there was a way... Well, I'm sure there is a way, but I was, I was contemplating turning on debugging for certain parts of the system rather than the whole system at once. You know, maybe even, maybe at the service level, maybe at the class level, I'm not sure, but um, anyway, it's just a thought. I actually reverted, to my, I reverted to- um, Do you know the find command too in the CLI? If you do colon, yes. colon find, and then, you know, say your skill class name or something, then it will only show you the, the logs that relate to that, which, is very nice. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll try that. That'll. Help. Um, but also, the CLI has crashed on me a few times today, just from entering a bunch of timer hmm. um, utterances. It's just you can't type commands into it anymore. It's really weird. Is that so, um, on the Mark II or? Done on my Pycroft. On the Pycroft. Yeah, it happens on the Mark II as well, actually. So I think that, which um, tells me there's probably a bug in there somewhere, but. I have no idea what I'm doing to make it crash, but it does. So when it crashes, so, it exits out to the to the actual. Actually, well, I don't even know if "crash" is the right word. It it, it becomes unusable. You can't type commands into it anymore. Hmm. And then if I close it and bring it back up, um, it still can't be. It's still unusable. I have to basically re restart Mycroft to make it usable again. Hmm. So and maybe something in Mycroft crashed and that made the CLI crash. I I don't know for sure. I haven't dug into it, but. It's just kind of strange. Yeah, I think I have seen that. So, um, all right. Well, if Michael's not coming back uh, and we're done for today, everyone knows what they're doing for the next 24 hours.